Jesus. Yes. So upon the servants and upon the handmaid of those days will I pour out my spirit. Acts 1 and 8, for ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of you. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All together. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Amen. Nothing like it had, it had ever happened in Jerusalem. Men and women poured out of the upper room down the steps to the street. They were, they were uh, ecstatic, faces glowing with joy, words of praise to God tumbling from stammering lips. They were noisy, too, noisy enough to draw a crowd of pilgrims that traveled to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost from all across the known world. These festival boards gathered, they were amazed to find the Galilean Jews who were known for having little formal education, let alone foreign language skills, speaking in their own language. Amen. Men from the island of Crete, Arabia. 
not about to let uh, this false assumption stand. He stood up with the other apostles and declared, These are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it, it is but the third hour of the day. It was only nine o'clock in the morning. The initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost had empowered the disciples and drawn their first crowd. Yeah. Now it was time for Peter to preach. He stepped to the edge of the upper room balcony and felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost stir within him. His mind became flooded with Old Testament prophecies and words Jesus himself has spoken over the past three and a half years. He opened his mouth and began to speak as he looked out across his audience of thousands. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my word. Come on now.
drink confidence in that water because we tell people that they must be baptized, as the scripture says. And they say, well, you know, if you would be baptized, y'all just believe in that water. And I've said, you know, that's a very strange thing in that people get on elevators every day. What I'm saying is, is that when you get on the elevator, are you trusting that elevator? And are you trusting that elevator? What you know what you're actually trusting in? What's that, Brother Sean? You're trusting in the engineers who designed it. You're trusting in the word of the engineer to state that it can support your way. Come on. That's all you got. You're trusting in the word of the engineer. That's why people step on those elevators and let the elevator take them up. They're trusting the number one, the word of the engineer and the work of the technician. You know what I'm saying? So when we tell people that they must be baptized, we're not trusting in the water, we're trusting in the word of Christ and his work. You know what I'm saying, amen? Amen. Amen. So with that being said, with that being said, we go further to a process of what you call the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, with the... Uh, in interpreting the Bible, in interpreting the scriptures, and looking at the scriptures, uh, there is a way of interpreting the scriptures that we use called, uh, I'm not going to get too technical, but you got to understand it, it's called hermeneutics. And what hermeneutics does is it, t it, it, it keeps you from putting your own biases in your interpretation. Come on now. Amen? And one of the first rules of is, is to do no violence to the text. In other words, that you cannot change the text. And not only are we, our ministers bound uh, we just on, on, on a fiduciary uh, response, we also have a, a scriptural imposed in how we should not change the text. Somebody please get quickly Romans, I mean Revelations, Revelations 22, 17 through 19. I need somebody to read loud. And get it say amen. You got it, Sister Deborah? Revelation 22, 17. What does it say? In other words, the Lord is telling everybody to come. Come. Everybody has the, has the ability to come. Okay, but go on. Well, I've heard this book. If you add to the word of God, what's going to happen? So man, you don't want you don't want to add to the place that's written in that book. Can I get anything now? Go ahead, sister. If any man should take away from the words of this book, God take away this part out of the book of God. Hold on, right there. That flies in the face of one saying, always say. Yeah. Because if there's one saying, always say, the Lord wouldn't say, if you do this behavior, I will take your name out of the book of life. And it has based upon something that you know. Can I get an amen? Yeah. So if you add to the Bible, amen, or take away from the Bible, then you what you do is you add to yourself the plagues that's in there, or you will add to yourself, take away uh, your name out of the book of life. Now, I love every single one of y'all, but ain't none of y'all worth one of y'all. So I gotta tell you, I gotta go give the scripture as it is written. Come on. Can I get an amen? Amen. So that so that so we are bound by scripture to see the scriptures as they are written. Now, when you look at the scriptures, what you're doing is, is you're taking the verse in context. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In other words, what are they talking about? Who's talking? Amen. Another thing is that you have to also uh, understand the context. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we do all this. Not to change the scripture by any means, but to understand 
what the Bible is saying. Amen? So, how does all this, where, where I'm going with this, is we would, let's turn to Genesis 1 and 2. Amen? Genesis 1 and 2. Sister, do, sister young sister, do you hear do you got it? Genesis 1 and 2. I think Brother Sean got it. Go ahead, sister. You got it, Brother Sean? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay. And the Spirit of oh, God. Okay. And the Spirit of God. Moved upon the face of the water. Moved upon the face of the water. Now, this is called the first mentioned principle of the scripture. When the Bible first mentions something, it sets precedence, and it's the same all the way out. It doesn't contradict itself. Correct. So, the first mention of the Holy Spirit is what? That it moves. Yeah, come on now. Take it, amen? Yeah. yeah. The Holy Spirit is not an inactive thing, but it is an active thing. That the Holy Spirit, now that word moved in the in the Hebrew is called uh is akul. And what that means is that something is advancing or continuously moving. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is is an active spirit, it moves. You see, it just don't move, but it moves to a point to change. To, in, in other words, whenever the Holy Spirit moves, it affects changes. Mm -hmm. You see how that's working in the book of Genesis? Yeah. The Holy Spirit moved, and it enacted a change. That's why when we come to church, the Spirit, we're asking the Spirit of God to move, because when God is moving or in the building, change can happen. Mm -hmm. Take it, amen. amen. You know what I'm saying? If somebody is sick, they can't be healed. Take it, amen? amen. If someone is seeking the Holy Ghost, they can be filled. When the Spirit of God moves, it affects change. And God's Spirit is continuously what? Moving. Moving. It's not just sitting where you just say, it's just not passively. No, it has an activist throat. You see what I'm saying? It is God in action or God exactly change. Amen? Now, this is what the scripture is telling us about the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read, if you go forward, if, the, if you go forward, and you read the Bible as throughout history, now, throughout the scriptures, now, Pentecostals have looked at scripture, and we have seen that the Holy Ghost from the Old Testament to the New Testament has always been moved. Yeah. And when it moves, something happens. Yeah. In the Old Testament times, when the Holy Spirit would come upon Samson, now people say, well, what gave Samson his strength? Well, it was twofold. You had this covenant that he didn't cut his hair, and the scripture says that when the Spirit came upon Samson, he would get super strength. Yeah. Right. Same Holy Spirit. See what I'm saying? And when the Spirit came upon Old Testament prophets, what did they do, Mr. Allen? They would prophesy. And it was just the point that the Spirit would come upon certain ones. Can you get amen? Amen. But see, God was going to do a new thing. A new thing. That is where the prophecy of Job come in. Somebody get that for me. Job, the second chapter. Uh, Job, second chapter, the 28th verse. Minister. And it shall come to pass afterwards. Hold on. He's going to pour out his spirit upon who? All flesh. All flesh. Now what, now what does it all mean? Everybody. Everybody. Not everybody. Everybody. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Now who in here 
his flesh, raise your hand. So who was the Lord talking about he was going to put that spirit upon? Everybody raised their hand. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No longer was it just going to be for sinners. No longer was it just going to be for certain for people certain problems. But he said he was going to apply the spirit upon who minister? All flesh. Amen. Go ahead. Hold on. Now that right there, it flies in the face of what I call religious sexism. Yeah. Because he said he's gonna just he ain't just gonna pour it out on men. Come on now. He said he's gonna pour it out on who? Oh, sons and daughters. Yeah. He specifically said your sons and your daughters, they're gonna what? Oh, they're going to prophesy. Now that word prophesy, that means speak yeah. under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Spirit upon the power of God. Amen. So everybody, he this prophecy in Job, this 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 the, the Holy Ghost. Was saying he was going to give it to who? Everybody. 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 Not just a few selfs of people. Not just for back in them days. Yeah. The prophecy was that he was going to give it to everybody. Everybody. Amen. 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 This act of the spirit was going to come upon you. Mm -hmm. And when the spirit comes upon you, guess what you got to do? What is it doing? It's going to affect change. Yeah. Something's going to happen. Yeah. You just ain't going to sit there and say, yes, I received the Holy Spirit. But ain't nothing changed. Uh -huh. All right now. What does that fly in the face of? Uh -huh. The actual first mentioned principle of hermeneutics about the first mentioned principle of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Can I get amen? amen? Do we understand? Amen. amen. So when the Holy Spirit come upon you, something going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And see what happened. Now, in modern Pentecost, I'm going to take this to back to modern day Pentecost. You know what I'm saying? Now, throughout time, the Holy Spirit was always moving and being poured out on people. Okay. Uh, before I get ahead of myself, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm trying to, you know. Uh, now, Jesus told his disciples, he said, now look, I want y'all to go and tarry in the city. You know what I'm saying? He told them to wait. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to wait on the Lord? Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, a lot of times, we ain't waiting on the Lord. The Lord is waiting on us to get our stuff together. Correct. Can I get an amen? Amen. That's why they had to tarry, because the Lord was waiting on them to get on the right forward. Can I get an amen? Amen. And see, that's what I tell, I tell you. I can't give nobody the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Don't ask why come you don't got it either, because that ain't none of my business. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So he told them, now first, let's go back. How many uh, disciples did he feed? How many people did he feed? 5,000 folk. Mm -hmm. Now, if he fed these 5,000 folk, all them folk was following him. Yeah. It was all following the Lord. Yeah. You know? You know, folk will follow you anywhere as long as you give them the groceries. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. But then there came a time where the Lord told them that it was going to cost them something to walk with him. Mm. And a lot of them turned away and turned away. See, the, that's what we call, like, they have the uh, philosophy or the doctrine of what you call uh, the only way I can put it is called cheap grace. Mm. That, you know, God paid it all so you don't have to do nothing. Well, I'm here to tell you that that flies in the face because if that's not the case, the Lord will not have had told around to them and said, except you do X, Y, and Z, you won't have no part of me. Right. And when they found out, they had that, it's going to cost them something to walk with the Lord. They left. Yep. Amen? Yes, yes. So that flies in the face what I call the charismatic postmodernist theology of, you know, of just mental ascension yeah. to obtain salvation. No, it's more than just a mental ascension. Right. You got to change your behavior. Yes, Amen. Yes, and your behavior would affect something that you do. Yeah. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know what I'm saying? We're not trusting in the elevator. 
We're trusting in the word and the work of Christ. Amen. 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 Now, uh, after that, he had 500 disciples after he had was crucified, rose from the dead, spent 40 days teaching and preaching uh, his disciples. Yeah. He had 500 when he told them, go and wait in the city. And then by the time the Holy Ghost fell, guess how many was there left? About 120. About 120. Now that ought to tell you what's going on. Come on now. Amen. Why don't you think that they went from 5,000 down to 120? Because the Bible says he that endures to the end will be saved. Yeah. You got to learn how to win on the law. Yeah. Amen. You got to learn how to, you got to be patient. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And then, when, uh, and now, it was 120. Now, in that number of 120, guess who was there? It's <laughs> Jesus' mother. Yeah. Mary, Jesus' mother, was one of 120. So what does that tell you? That there is no, the, uh, what they call, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the deification of men. She had to be saved just like everybody else. Yeah. yeah. But I tell folks, Jesus' mother means the Holy Ghost. What do you think you mean? No, right now, too. Amen? Yeah. Jesus' mother had to be baptized. What do you think you are? Yeah. He didn't make no acceptance for his own mama. Right. Right. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Come on now. So when the, when the Holy Spirit, it says Jesus told the disciples to tell. It says that uh, the arrival of the Holy Spirit surprised the Jews and the pilgrims that, uh, that day. Now, it says when the day of Pentecost fully came. Yes. Now, Pentecost is a, fest is a festival of Shiva, where they do the festival of the first fruits. Yeah. And that's when they bring the first fruits and they start bringing these offers and stuff 50 days after the Passover, after they left Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the funny thing. The day of Pentecost, according to what uh, Orthodox Jewish teachers teach, is the exact day that the law was revealed also to Moses. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the day that the Holy Ghost came down on the inaugural day of the church was the day, was the same day that the law came down to Moses. Yes. New covenant. New covenant. Right. And guess what? He said he was not going to put his laws no more on tables of stone. Uh -huh. But he was going to put them in our minds and in our hearts. Oh, yes. Now, when I, I'm, a, I'm not a stupid person. I'm going to tell you, I'm not a stupid person. And when I was young, I couldn't read. My mom made me read the scriptures, and that's how I learned how to read. Yes. But here's the funny thing about it. I could read the Bible and memorize the Bible, but I knew it, but most of it I didn't understand. Uh -huh. So the day I received the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then the scriptures became alive to me. The Holy Ghost Holy is God coming. Look, the Holy Ghost is basically this. Mr. Allen, my name is Jesus. I come to be your friend. Yes, yes. You see what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost is when you get God, when God comes in your heart. Yeah. And he, and guess what? You will understand and know exactly what he wants. Exactly. Amen. Amen. I tell people, so I tell now, now I tell folks got the Holy Ghost. Y'all know what's right. Uh-huh. Y'all yeah. yeah. make preaching easy. Y'all know what's right. Amen. You don't pay no pity pat with it. We know what's right. Amen. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, and the day of Pentecost came, when the day of Pentecost came, it says when the day of Pentecost came, they received the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost fell and down. The promise is unto you and to all that were afar off. Yeah. Now, with that prophecy, there was in joy. You see the fulfillment of that prophecy 
in the book of Acts when Peter begins to preach. Yes. Uh, yes. So, Mr. Allen, Acts, to our, to our scripture, uh, uh, it's Acts 2, let's start in love. Start, start uh, I think it's 2 and uh, Two and eight. Is there two and eight? Let's say, uh, yeah. These are not drunk as his poems. No, these are not drunk as you suppose. That's where it starts there. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're praying, say for instance, when you're praying for some shoes, 
You don't pray for tongues, you pray for shoes and tongues, don't you? Amen. 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 When you pray for, you don't pray for tongues, you pray for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's going to make itself known when it show up. Yeah. The sign is going to come with it. Come on. Amen. 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 Now, here's what I like about this, 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 this thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it's uh, Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. And then how people are going to say this about uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 12. Now, when you look at the scriptures and you look at this, you see the consistency from the old, from the, from the, from the old testament to the new testament yeah. that the spirit of God is present. Yeah. Amen. And the question becomes, well, how do I get this present spirit to be present? Where is where in the world is God? Where is Carmen San Diego? Amen. Where in the world is God? Amen. Somebody read that for me. It is not in heaven. That you should say. That you should not. That you should say. Who will go up to heaven? Who will go up to heaven? To get it for us. To get it for us. And make us hear it. And make us hear it. That we may observe. That we may observe. That's thirteen. Go ahead. Thirteen. Nor is it beyond the sea. Nor is it beyond the sea. Someone. That you should say. That you should say. Who will cross the sea? Who will cross the sea? To get it for us. And make us hear it. That we may observe. Uh huh. But the word is very. Oh, but it's close to you. In your mouth. It is even in your mouth. And in your heart. And in your heart. That you may observe. That you may observe. <laughs> Amen. You want to know where God is? God in heaven is the praise of Oh, us. that's right. God is in the midst of all of our praises. I tell people salvation is not the. You want the Holy Ghost? Open up your mouth wide right. and begin to praise Him. Yeah. And when the Spirit of Truth comes in, He yeah. will make Himself known. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because He dwells in the midst of our praises. Yeah. Yeah. I tell people that's why I say, when God is in the field, God is in the field. The sin is in the field. When God is in the field, those that are seeking the Holy Ghost can't be yeah. saved. Right, when God now. is in the midst of his people, amen, the, the, the bound of sin can be broken. I, the yoke of sin can be cast off. Yes, I, yes. I'm going to tell you that the spirit of God is not deep, even in your mouth. Only thing you got to do is open up your mouth wide. people do certain things. 
right when they become a Christian and they mature. Because there's certain things will transpire in the life of an individual who has repented and been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. There will be changes in their life. Amen. They don't curse anymore. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's certain things that take place, even when it comes down to what you have. Good. Amen. Go ahead. That you change it, that comes naturally as you begin to grow in God. Praise God. And it's so important to realize that uh, once a person comes to God, there's no need to rush them. Yeah. Let the Holy Ghost do the work. The Holy Ghost will do the work. Praise God. In other words, if uh, a person is taught, Amen. And they sit on the preaching. Praise God. The Holy Ghost will prick their heart. Yes. And they need to change something. Yes. Yep. And they will change. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Thanks, Brother Rose. We got about five, ten minutes for us from home.